Hey guys, you're listening to the Time to Football podcast, and we're going to be joined by a special guest today to recap everything that happened in the 2018 offseason. What an amazing uh, offseason so far that has happened. Not much is going on right now just because it's post draft period. Um, but today's a special day. Just so you guys know, that, is, that are listening to this podcast and watching on YouTube as well, time to football. The trademark, the, the whole word, the word time to football got trademarked today. So huh. um, legally, if anyone tries to use time to football, I can sue them. Watch out. Yeah, I actually uh, I had a whole ordeal. It took six months to get that trademarked and um, had to go through the whole trademark process. And Crazy. Someone stole my uh, username on Instagram, huh. Time to Football. Okay. It was just one account okay. that had one post inactive. Hmm. And I tried reaching out to them, hey, can you change it? Can you change it? Never changed it. So finally today, yeah. I acquired that username. And it feels so good. Feels wonderful. Got to feel good, man. Thank you for joining us for this podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. Um, like I said, nothing much really going on in the offseason right now, but we are going to talk about everything that happened so far. And today we are joined by this gentleman that is sitting right across from me, and that is Griffin Gamble. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Griffin is, if you keep up with Tom football, you know exactly who he is. Um, he was in the Madden tournament, and we didn't. Um, put this up on YouTube last year, but next year we're gonna have a whole fantasy football documentary yes. based off of our town football league. Griffin was actually the, the champ last year. Griffin, who was on your team? Do you remember? Man, uh, Todd Gurley was was oh. kind of who brought me home, so yeah. I have to give a shout out to Todd. Um, dude, long awaited. Good to be here. Yeah. Finally, finally doing it. I know we've both been looking forward to this. I've been following you for a while, so. Uh, I'm excited to chop it up, get into the to the weeds a bit. Definitely. This is going to be lots of fun Yeah. Um, to talk about it, uh, what's going on. Um, big things that we want to talk about were quarterbacks on new teams. Yeah. Um, what, what are some teams that you're looking forward to seeing uh, play in 2018? New quarterbacks on new teams. Yeah. Which guys are you looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, I think the story of the offseason was the quarterback – the movement, right? And, and I know we talked offline a little bit, and, and I think it's my philosophy that it's a quarterback-driven league, and I think everything is sort of built on these teams trying to find the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see it year after year. There's sort of those teams that are always scraping the bottom of the barrel trying to get the guy in the draft. Um, but really, you know, I think this offseason was interesting. Everybody knows Kirk Cousins was available. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was really kind of the first domino to fall, right? And, and it's interesting because there's never a quarterback really in their prime who's really kind of an upper tier guy that's available, right? And who's willing right. to leave their team. Um, and so I think that was kind of, I was really excited. I'm a big Kirk Cousins fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was, I was excited to see what would happen. Surprisingly enough, a domino, a couple of dominoes fell, kind of leading up to the Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, move to to Minnesota. We obviously saw the trade. We saw Alex Smith uh, heading to the Redskins, and then we saw uh, Case Keenum obviously signing with the Broncos before Kirk decided to go. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, a lot of movement, a lot, a lot of things getting shaken up. I'm excited to, to watch Kirk do do his thing in Minnesota. Um, I think the expectations are high. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I really, I don't want to put too much pressure on them, but I think it's Super Bowl or bust mm-hmm. at some level. I mean, yeah, he's I mean, walking into an incredible defense. He's I mean, a team that was in the Super Bowl last year, a great offense. I don't know if he could ask for anything else. Right. And I think, you know, I was kind of wanting him to go to New York selfishly just to kind of see the Jets get somebody. Yeah. Because it's been tough to watch them. I kind of pull for the underdogs, I think, in the NFL at least. So, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's it's going to be interesting uh, to watch Kirk. Um, he's got the weapons. So, I think that he really kind of, uh, you know, set the foundation for the other moves. Yeah. So, speaking of the domino effect, Alex Smith got traded to the Redskins. Right. That's when Kirk found out he's going to be a free right. agent. Do you think that the Redskins actually legitimately got better with Alex Smith as opposed to Kirk Cousins? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, I, I struggle with this move a little bit. Um, and again, I think this just goes to show 
how fearful teams are of not having somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that kind of makes me wonder, okay, what teams are really trying to win and what teams are just trying to, to kind of stay afloat? Obviously, they want to they want to sell tickets. They want to be relevant. It's hard to say, man. I, I'm a Kirk Cousins guy, right? Mm-hmm. I, I like Kirk. He's younger. I think he's got a little bit of better arm. I think he's got a little more fire in him. Alex Smith is Mr. Consistency. I mean, everyone knows that. Um, I, I think they may have gotten a little bit better just from a game management standpoint. I think they're going to be able to control Alex a little bit better than they were able to control Kirk. I don't, I don't. I think there was some friction there more than we probably saw, more than that was let on. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think if anything, they they may have got marginally better, but it's 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 not by much. Um, but what are some other teams that have new quarterbacks you're looking forward to see? Yeah, uh, I mean, I you know uh, the Broncos are going to be interesting. We kind of touched on them. Um, amazing defense. So you know, they're they're not they're kind of lower on my list. Um, I think the Jets are really interesting. Obviously, you know, Sam Darnold. I, I thought the Jets won the draft. Mm. Um, you know, as much as I wanted them to go all in for Kirk, you know, they made a really strong offer, but it, I think his, you know, his heart was in Minnesota. But um, I think they got incredible value at number three with Sam. I don't think they can be mad at that. Mm. I, I'm really hoping he gets to get in there pretty early. Um, I think he's got some good vets around him. I like Josh McCowan. Yeah. going to be interesting to see what Teddy does in the mix. Um, and you know, maybe Sam's a guy they stash for a couple years and let him mature and, and, and get in there when he's ready. But, um, I think that's a really interesting storyline to watch. I think the bills are interesting. Um, I think the Browns are probably, you know, up there with the Vikings to see what's going to go down. Um, you know, I was reading a little bit yesterday, you know, just to see how Baker's progressing. You know, I think, I think they say, you know, Baker's got the personality to be a leader, but. Tyrod is really solid right now. And so I think they're going to have a tough choice to, to make, you know, who, who do we roll with right now? Yeah. Um, and so I don't know, man. Thoughts on Baker at this point? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give thoughts on on the whole entire rookie quarterback class, yeah. at least the, the top five. Sure. Um, I would say out of all of them, Sam Darnold has the most opportunity to start all 16 games. Um I believe in New York that's what they're going to do, even though maybe Josh McCown's more polished. Right. Um, they're going to take that approach with that Oakland did with Derek Carr, that Tennessee did with Marcus Mariota, that Philadelphia did with Carson Wentz. Yeah. Even Atlanta doing with Matt Ryan, Cincinnati with Andy Dalton. Like, There's so many teams that approach it to where you got a first-round, second-round pick. Mm-hmm. You make them start all 16 games their rookie season. Mm-hmm. And then they just flourish yeah. their their second year. Mm-hmm. Uh, first year is, you know, whatever. But right. their second year, they really take off. We saw that with Carson Wentz this past year. Sure. Um, but I think Baker Mayfield is, man, I, I unless Tyrod gets hurt or if the Browns are in a position where towards the end of the season, they can't, like, they're eliminated from playoff contention. Yeah. Then maybe we'll see Baker Mayfield come in, but I think yeah, Tyrod is their guy for now. Yeah, Mayfield might play in probably two or three games mm-hmm. this year. Um, what do you what do you make of the Baker Johnny Manziel comparison? Man, it, it's uh, can I say this that Baker is a sober Johnny Manziel? Wow. Oh, okay. I'll, take. Maybe I'll I'll cut that out. <laughs> that was that was pretty bad. No, proud of Johnny and what he's doing with the CFL. Yeah. Um, I, I see it as far as their body type goes Mm -hmm. um johnny seems a little bit skinnier but um they definitely have personality both of them do um and i thought if if manzel stayed in cleveland he would have he would have been pretty solid Mm -hmm. um he had some solid games you know he actually holds the franchise record for passing yards in a single game is that right Mm -hmm. 373 um so if, if there are any comparisons between the two, mm-hmm. if Johnny Manziel does that in Cleveland yep. with all the behind the scenes stuff that he's been struggling with, what can Baker do? Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, part of me wants to believe that Baker is, has got the support system around him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I almost think that he's probably watched what John, what happened to Johnny and has kind of, you know, people have gotten around him and said, look, you know, I think you've got a, a chance to do something here and you don't want to be, you know, do what this guy did. Right. Right. Um, and, and I don't know. I, I'm torn on Baker just because he's small. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I'm not yeah. a fan of the small QBs. Okay, and, and Russell Wilson. I know, and I thought about Russell before we started this. Something about Russell's build 
and his hands. He just has big hands. He does. You know what I mean? Like those those guys that get out there, and that's one of my pet peeves. Like, you know, Rex Grossman, those those kind of guys, they just had small hands. Mm-hmm. That's the hottest take of this whole podcast. Small hands. Small hands. <laughs> those football games. Uh, you know but, what they say about small hands. Exactly. Can't throw footballs. That's small balls, dude. <laughs> Cut it out. Um, I'm keeping that. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, man, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to watch. You know, I thought Josh Allen was the guy in the draft. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it was. I was torn between Sam and Josh. I love Josh's build. I know Sam's not the biggest guy in the world, um, but, man, he just throws the ball so well. What, what other teams are there? Is that – all you guys, as far as quarterbacks, what do you think of actually Lamar Jackson? As we we're talking about rookie quarterbacks, him in Baltimore. I think that people want it to work really bad. I don't know if it's going to work. Right? You nailed it. You read my mind. But continue. I think people really want it to work. I, I don't know. Again, I, I'm 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 more of your prototypical quarterback kind of guy. I don't see. I, I think Lamar's got a lot of talent. He's an incredible athlete. I could kind of see him being a Terrell Pryor, right. 2.0 eventually. I don't know if. It, I'm confused with 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 um, Baltimore because I don't know what the rush is to get Joe out of out of town. I don't. Mm, I thought I don't it was it sort either. of new to me. Uh, I mean, he's won a Super Bowl. Right. He's got an incredible uh, you know system. I think. Mm-hmm. I think he's got the coach. I think he's proven that he can be successful. I think they've got some really. I think it's going to be exciting watching getting Crabtree yeah. in there. Well, the Super Bowl was six years ago. So. Yeah. Maybe I mean, kind of write your future, I would say, if you get a Super Bowl. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe they feel like the pressure's on a little bit. Maybe he feels the pressure. Maybe it's just to get that next guy. Um, you know, I kind yeah. of always like to compare him to Matt Ryan because mm-hmm. they came in the same year. Right. Kind of watch him with how they progress. We don't see that pressure on Matt. Obviously, Matt doesn't have a Super Bowl. Obviously, he's got the Super Bowl visit last year. But it's interesting, man. I, I think even more so. What's interesting for me is, and and I don't know if you think this, but just the rookie quarterback conversation every year is really interesting to me. And I guess my perspective is changing a little bit because I've been so anti quarterback, Mm -hmm. right? Like I've been so anti these teams that just wait and and draft a guy every year after year after year, and they don't make an aggressive move to go get a veteran. And then I'm like, well, it's gotta be super hard to to even put yourself in a position to get a veteran that's willing to leave a team. Mm -hmm. But I think after last season watching Carson Watching Carson and Jared Goff really blossom has changed my perspective a little bit. So I'm, I want to know your thoughts kind of on on the philosophy of taking quarterback high first round versus kind of finding those second, third, fifth round gyms. Mm-hmm. And if you're a team like the Jets, if you're a team like, you know, the Bears, how do you find middle ground in, you know, taking a risk after year after year? and maybe trying to fall into something as with a veteran. Yeah, and every team is different. I think it just depends on what situation you are. If you need a quarterback right now, obviously first round. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're in a situation, maybe someone like the New England Patriots, mm-hmm. they're drafting to just be ready for Tom Brady and, and the inevitable when he retires. Mm-hmm. Drafting someone like Jimmy Garoppolo right. in the second round, mm-hmm. um, that'll be a game changer. Yeah, Even to a lesser degree, you go with the Seattle Seahawks in 2012 when they drafted Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. They drafted him in the third round. Right. Because they signed, actually, Matt Flynn. I don't know if you remember him or not, but played like yeah. five or six games and yep. it went off. Right. Signed a three-year, $10 million contract with mm-hmm. them. And they were went into that 2012 season being like, okay, Matt Flynn's going to be our guy. But then it wasn't until the preseason. They were like, wow, we yeah. what did we come across? This guy, Russell Wilson, this mm-hmm. fell, he fell to us in the third round. Right. Um, so I think it just definitely depends on the situation that you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for teams like the Jets, Cleveland for so many years, you take risks on all these guys that didn't work out like Brady Quinn, right. Brandon Whedon, mm-hmm. so many of these guys. Um, what do you think about the teams that give up their future for a guy mm-hmm. and then the next year there's going to be three more guys? Right, like that's what I have a problem with these teams yeah. that give up so many so many picks – Maybe a really good player just to get this guy who's touted to be the next, you know, whatever, Drew Brees. And then it mm-hmm. seems like there's we're having the same conversation come draft time next year. There's exactly. always that crop of guys. Yeah, and and maybe it lasts for a little bit of time, maybe mm-hmm. like two or three years like I did with RG3. Right. Um, the Redskins gave up a lot. Way too much. Uh, to trade with the Rams right. up to that second pick. Mm-hmm. 
But then you also look at maybe someone like the New York Giants Mm -hmm. um, back in 2004 when they drafted Eli Manning. They traded actually a lot. They drafted Phillip Rivers, Mm -hmm. traded him to San Diego, um, but also eventual picks that led to Pro Bowl caliber players like their kicker, Nate Kading or Sean Merriman. Um, So it it does work out, Mm -hmm. but it also doesn't. I think you got to be very... Very particular in that. If I was a general manager, I'd be very cautious in that kind of case. Yep. Um, I wouldn't do something like that mm-hmm. um, just because I'm that kind of guy where, yeah, the quarterback position is important, but it's not everything. Right. Um, that's why in this draft, I was thinking, well, Cleveland, they could have gotten someone like Saquon Barkley at number sure. one and then still gotten Baker Mayfield exactly. at number four. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm more of like a you know, you, you want a good quarterback, but you don't have to have the best quarterback as long as you have a good team around him. For sure. Um, and I think that's what teams like uh, Cleveland is doing with Tyrod Taylor. Not the best quarterback out there. The Jaguars. The Jaguars, yeah. So teams like that, if you just build around them, mm-hmm. you don't, you could find some yeah. gems in the second or third round. Sure. You know, another team that really sticks out to me just in the quarterback conversation, and I'm, and I'm glad I've waited – to bring this up, but I think the team that got the best quarterback this offseason are the Cardinals. Mm, yeah. I think Sam Bradford was the steal of the whole quarterback shuffle. He's really polished over the years, yeah. Man, I mean, it, it, the only knock against him is his health, right? I yeah. mean, he played. He started two games last season, I think. Mm-hmm. Two uh, games, yeah. And I think he had a quarterback rating of like 125 or something in the first two games. Crazy. And I was yeah. really excited to see him kind of fully healthy. Yeah. I mean, I think you can make the argument that Sam is – you know, a top five passer in the league when he's healthy. Accuracy, I think, is there. Mm-hmm. I think he's brilliant. Um, I like his size. I like his arm strength. So I think the Cardinals got really lucky. Um, I'm going to be, It's you know, obviously I think if he has a fully healthy year, he's going to get a massive contract out of that. Yeah. You know, it's funny to, It's funny to me because the Cardinals kind of fell into Carson Palmer. Now they've fallen into Sam Bradford, and they continue to remain relevant with this aging group of players. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, you know, I think the Cardinals are going to be fun to watch, man. I, th- I think I think Sam Bradford was was a steal. Talking a little bit about Spider Two Wide Banana, um, good old Chucky. <laughs> what are your thoughts on him going to the Raiders? Man, I'm a big Gruden fan. Um, man, I, I almost want to do an impression, but I'm going to hold back. I, <laughs> I kind of feel like we're in a quarterback camp right now. Um, so much of the league is about energy. I think it's about team morale, right? It's I don't know if a coach has that much impact. X's and O's. Mm-hmm. I think coaches can develop really good systems and have a lot of good pieces in place. I think yeah. you know, you know, uh, Bill Belichick is probably the best example of that. So, you know, coaches like Andy Reid really develop systems, the Harbaugh's, and 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 get people in place, guys that'll ride with them for a long time. But I don't know if bringing a coach in who's very skilled makes a team a contender in, in year one, right? I don't know if it's mm. that much of an. Imp- and I'm a big NBA fan too. I, I kind of liken it to that. Obviously, I think the the coaching process is probably more important in football than basketball. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the players, I think you got you got you know the guys have to go make it happen. Yeah. So with that being said, I love the Gruden move. Um, I think it's exciting. I think he's a player's coach. Um, I think the players respect him. I think he got his guy uh, in Derek Carr. Um, you know, I've been wanting. I was wanting Gruden to go to Green Bay for a long time. Hmm. Um, I think he was kind of holding out for McCarthy to move on, so he could kind of wedge himself in there to, yeah. to get with Aaron Rodgers. We all know he's got a, he's got a crush on Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> um, but man, I like it. I think it's exciting for uh, for Las Vegas. Um, you know, I really am excited to see what you know, a couple of questionable moves. Getting some older guys in there, getting Jordy, getting Jordy in there. Yeah. Going for Doug Martin, trying to establish the. I mean, they've got Marshawn. It's going to be interesting to see if the aging backfield can do, but. Uh, if the aging backfield can hang can hang in there, but I'm excited. What are your thoughts? But also bringing in Martavis Bryant, who's yes. a little bit younger. Yes, um, I mean he's a stud, which is pretty great. Um, I re- I really love John Gruden. Um, I know that um, he's been wanting to to coach for a little bit, even though he says that you know ESPN is my job. Right. Uh, well, I don't believe him because now he's a coach and right. signing him to to a ten year deal, like you said. First year, maybe you don't make that kind of impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's why you signed him for that 10-year deal because you're going to see over the time yeah. 
He's, he needs pieces around him. He, he needs his guys, mm-hmm. and he's going to slowly weed out the guys that he doesn't want. Mm-hmm. Um, we're seeing that all around the league. Mm-hmm. Coaches do that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, maybe in like Miami with Adam Gase. Yes. Um, he's getting rid, rid of his guys, um, like the Dom Kong Su, which you say, like, well, why are you getting rid of some of that caliber? Well, that's not his guy. It doesn't fit who he wants to play with. Right. Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sure. Um, but I think over time, yeah, Gruden is going to go ahead and, and, and make those moves. Maybe just for now, like we talked about Sam Bradford being a bridge quarterback, mm-hmm. maybe bringing in veterans just to be the mm-hmm. bridge players like yep. Jordy Nelson or Doug Martin. Uh, but who knows, maybe two, three years down the line when they actually do play in Las Vegas, yeah. Gruden is going to be a force and a contender in the AFC West. Yeah, I think Gruden brings a lot of intangibles too. You know, I think that's the point I'm trying to make is that I think Gruden brings in a lot of stuff that a normal coach wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I think his personality, his reputation, people, he, you know, he's a magnetic personality. People like him. I think the players will, will gravitate towards him and want to win for him. Right. Uh, just because I don't think he has an agenda. I think he's just going in there to win football games. I liked what he said when he got signed. You know, it's an absurd amount of money. Nobody needs that much money. He's not there for the money. And, and, and I think he said in his presser, you know, if, if in season one and two they, they suck, he's out of there, right? He's not just going to stick around and run them dry for right. all that money. So I like that. I think his intentions That's are good. right. Um, so with that being said, I think he can make an impact year one just because of what he brings to the table, yeah. uh, some of those intangibles. So, and I think it's Derek Carr's team. You know, yeah. I think he, he there's no way he was not going to go to one of these teams rebuilding. Just doesn't make any sense. You know, we see these we see these teams that turn over coaches year after year because the quarterbacks suck. Mm-hmm. So I really like that that he's going to a, to a team with an established quarterback. I think their offense is going to be so good, even with some of those older players. You said Martavis coming in, I love it. Um, I think the the offense is going to be is going to be good enough to kind of float the team. Um, and if he gets a good, you know, if his if his if his defensive coordinator can handle, you know, the defense, then um, I think they're going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to Gruden as well. Uh, and we're going to get more into a couple more topics here in the Town Football Podcast. Um, but I would just want to take a moment uh, to tell you guys about Patreon. So what Patreon is is kind of like a GoFundMe for content creators. Um, and it's the best way to support your favorite content creator, whether that be um, videographers, podcasters, um, Austin Mahomes, whoever it may be. You can actually go to this site, patreon.com, and if you search for Time to Football on there, um, we now launch a Patreon page. And there's perks for it too. You choose how much money you wanna contribute every single month. Um, if you donate $1 a month, you'll get a free Town of Football wristband. If you donate $5 a month, then you'll get a free Town of Football t-shirt, which if you guys are watching the video podcast on YouTube, I'm wearing this right now. And it feels amazing. I want that. It's a medium, and it feels wonderful. I need a double X. Yeah, I've been working out. Um, but uh, so if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash time the number two football you can choose to donate however much you want if everyone we have about across social media 2600 subscribers followers listeners whatever it may be 2600 if everyone just donated one dollar a month we would have so met so much money to to just Take time to football to great new heights imagine if they donated a hundred dollars a month a hundred dollars a month that would I would quit my job. <laughs> um, that'd be fantastic. No, if you go to patreoncom slash time to football, look up uh, what the perks are. Uh, there's awards for different tiers. How much money you give? Um, that's patreoncom slash time to football. So to uh, wrap up here, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? What's been interesting? Any interesting storylines going on in the NFL yeah. right now. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me and you know what I'm what I'm waiting for is to see where Des Bryant's going to land. Mm. Um and I, and I'm cursed, dude, I'm cursed because I just love aging superstars in in all sports, right? And, and so I'm the guy that will take uh, Matt Forte number 1 overall. Mm. I'm still going to do it this year. Interesting. I don't think he's on a team, but I'll take him. He's retired. <laughs> I'm taking him. You heard it here. Uh, so man, I'm I'm a big Des fan. I, I just love the I love big personality players, guys that that you know are superstars. And I know Des has had a has has had a, a rough past couple of years, but um, it's it's interesting to me, man. I, 
29 years old. He's still in the twilight of his prime. I still think he can produce. I think he's an elite athlete. Um, I, 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 part of me wonders, obviously we know that he, uh, he curved the, the Baltimore offer, which yeah. I thought was a solid offer. It was. I don't blame him for not wanting to go to Baltimore um, for obvious reasons. I think, you know, obviously we touched on Flacco earlier, um, and I think they're a little crowded, mm-hmm. you know, now getting Crabtree. Um, so I think they're good where they are. I'm not knocking Flacco. Um, I just think they're – I don't know if they need Dez. And I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think he's going to somewhere where he could kind of prove – I'm almost wondering, you know, I think there were some reports that Dez thought he was kind of worth a lot more than $7 million a year. He was mm-hmm. looking for a place where he could go play for one year, have a really Lies. good contract year, and then, I don't know, man, it, it's not like 30-year-old receivers are getting $30 million contracts, right? So I think that's probably on him a little bit. In hindsight, I think he probably wishes he took that deal. Um, it just I, I get the feeling that there's something going on here that, that we don't know. I don't know if it's a health problem. I don't know if it's, um, you know... I don't know. I don't know if there's a lot of teams going after him and, and, and they're just kind of keeping it under wraps. You know, I think I think after seeing the draft play out, a lot of a lot of these teams that were needing receivers got their guys in the draft. Um, and so now Dez is just kind of left out. Mm-hmm. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. I've got a short list of teams that I'd like to see him go, t- go to. Yeah. Um, I think the Packers would be – I think they're a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I love what they did bringing in Jimmy Graham. I think Devontae Adams is a top five receiver in the league. I think mm-hmm. he could be the most productive receiver in the league next year. Um, I think you throw Dez in there just to watch what Aaron could do with those three guys would be fun. Um, I think the Chargers are interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, the Rams are interesting. Mm-hmm. I think I would love to go see him. Uh, I'd love to see him out out there with Brandon Cooks, uh, young Jared Goff, Stacked gunslinger, team. man. I Good market for him, popular team. I think it'd be cool. So I think that's interesting, man. Um, so it's going to be fun to see where he lands. Yeah. I um, He does one on one year deal. And I was thinking the same thing. Well, you're 30 years old mm-hmm. in 2019. Yep. Who's going to sign you for so much money? Right. Um, you know, I, I to, to how it's turned out right now, I think in the end, yeah, he should have signed with the Ravens. Mm hmm multi-year deal um a lot of security a lot of security yeah absolutely now he's going to get a one-year deal Mm -hmm. somewhere which is exactly what he wants but it's not going to be for so much money uh because people have already passed on on the on the draft Mm -hmm. we've already signed their own free agents that they want to fit the system they're already in in otas Mm -hmm. trying to figure out where all these players fit in their system so um We'll see, though. But, Griff, I appreciate you joining us Dude. for this podcast. One last thing yeah. uh, before we sign off. I always ask every single guest on this show yes. what their favorite moment is in football, whether it be college football yep. or professional football. Yes. Got a favorite moment? <sighs> this is a tough one because, as you know, I'm a late, I'm, I'm a, I was a late bloomer in football. You know, yeah. I'm a. I grew up watching basketball primarily, and so I, I, you know, I'm in love with the NFL now. I love, you know, uh, the business of of the league, and I'm a huge fan now. But I, I kind of missed a lot of those football moments growing up. Um, one that sticks out to me is is the Odell catch. I think it's probably the most excited I've been watching a game. Um, I remember in my living room watching the game with my dad and and watching that happen. I mean, it was electric. You know, I'm, yeah. I I was as shocked when it happened as the replays showed you know sometimes a play will happen and it takes a couple days for you to realize how crazy it was right there was no mistaking that that was like the greatest catch of all time yeah um and to watch you know while we're you know fairly young a player that's young um a player that's going to be around i think a transcendent player watch him make that play live on tv was cool for me mm-hmm. um i think that's what the league's about those moments um yeah. and i think that was uh you know a play that's kind of helped me uh, grow grow in football and, and appreciate it more. So. It's, yeah, it's crazy. I was watching that live as well. Um, yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, no way. Yeah. This guy had a defender yeah. that was pulling on his jersey. It was obviously pass interference. Yep. Bends all the way back, yep. grabs it with three fingers. Crazy. 50-yard pass, phenomenal touchdown. Nuts. Um, definitely a great moment in the NFL. Totally. Um, Griffin, I I appreciate you yeah, joining man. our show. Yeah. Um, for you guys, thank you so much for joining us. If you're on the podcast, um, make sure you guys go rate and review. Um, that lets us know, hey, you guys like the content that we're coming out with. Uh, you guys have been good so far with it, but just keep it up. Uh, share it with your friends. 
Um, and if you guys are watching this video on YouTube, just know that we do have a podcast on iTunes. So it might be a little bit easier than watching a 40 something minute video on YouTube. You can just go to uh, iTunes, search for Time to Football. It's the number two, so the word two. Um, and just listen to it on the on the drive to work, at the gym, wherever it may be. Um, we are joined by Griffin Gamble. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Cavs in seven.